It took Jeff Tremaine about 10 years to learn to say action. First time I was on a regular movie, like the director was like, would be say action when it was starting time to start filming. And I was like, whoa, that's really helpful. Jeff should start doing that. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, before it was like, are we filming? And then Jeff would go. Go. <laughs> But go, uh, yeah, go. eventually, eventually Jeff learned to say action. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the funniest show. <laughs> I'm Chris. I'm May. And today we're filming the second installment of our viewers' questions, our Q&A. We got some awesome questions. We love answering more. So if you have questions about anything in life, not just about Jackass or Wild Boys or even us, just about anything, you need advice, you need guidance, ask us. Because we've got some hard-learned wisdom. Oh, yeah. Hard-earned wisdom. (laughs) A bit of both. And sometimes a lack of wisdom. Yeah. A playful lack of wisdom. (laughs) A lot. (laughs) Let's get right to the questions. So this is from Kaylin. Chris, sorry if this seems like a stupid question, but what the F is that white heart on Steve-O's chest at the start of Jackass? It's not a stupid question, Kaylin. It's a very good question. One that should be asked a lot more. <laughs> the heart actually came from Jackass, like, was going to go into a second season. It, it proved a success. Um, Steve-O decided to move out to California from Florida, and Dmitry Elyaskovich flew out to Florida, and they took a road trip and on the way they were going to, you know, film every interesting thing that they could, which they did. And in Alabama, Sivo went to a local tattoo parlor that also did branding. Oh boy. And so he got the heart branded on his chest. And um, of course, when, when they gave it to MTV as they were, their standard censorship was, they decided that was too. Really? MTV? Every time there was something that, Not just to do with like fire, but like things were hot, I guess they were just afraid of because maybe they'd gotten in trouble for something in the past. But yeah, that uh, they wouldn't allow it. So yeah, I even have a scar from something we filmed during Wild Boys. There was like this bush that you could rub on yourself. So me, Steve and Wee Man were with this tribe, the Samburus, and we're rubbing this plant on ourselves that would give you, they do the scarification with. And then everyone got these scars and then MTV's like, nope, can't do that either. No scarring. Yeah. Believe it or not, they said the same thing with drinking the horse cum in um, Argentina. But luckily, we saved that bit, and that's one of the inspirations for making Jackass 2. You know, originally, we n- never thought there'd be a second Jackass movie. Um, but since we couldn't show that on Wild Boys, and we had a great bit in the can. This is a good question. That happened. So that's Kaylin. a great question, Kaylin. Yep. So yeah, that's what is up with that heart on his chest. Hmm. <laughs> I'll never forget the the uh, the character that gave him that brand. What do you mean? She was just a wild oh, looking okay. character. The person that yeah, did it. Okay. Yeah, I just I, I I gotta go back and look at that footage. Yeah, just anyone since branding, you know, they're they're <laughs> a character. <laughs> but um, I wonder anyway. what the smell would be like. Gnarly, burning flesh smell. Yeah. Oh, a terrible smell. Yeah. <laughs> Yuck. <laughs> Yuck. All right. Thanks, Kaylin. <laughs> thanks, Kaylin. Um, so the next one is from Nick. And do you have any good memories filming Wild Boys in New Zealand? Uh, um, yeah, I have a lot of good memories filming Wild Boys in New Zealand, which you probably saw a lot of them on Wild Boys. But, oh, my God, one morning I, I uh, walked out of my room <laughs> And I was naked. I was getting out of bed. Can I just elaborate on this? Waking up naked and going outside of your room? I might have taken a sleeping pill the night before. (laughs) Because this has happened other times. This has happened before. I'm in the hallway of this this lodge. We're staying out in the mountains. Beautiful area. And so I'm I'm stuck naked. And, um, you know, there's other people staying there. And so I was like, all right, I'll go out the window of the hallway and climb like across the balconies and make my way back to my room. Cause I knew like my sli- there was a sliding door or something, some way I could get in. And I, so I go across and I see a curtain open and it's another <laughs> naked man <laughs> with his camera. He was one of our crew members that we'd hired in Australia that I didn't even really know the guy. He's 
like wakes up to greet the day naked <laughs> with his camera to take a picture of the beautiful scenery. And I come across naked and we had this really awkward moment where we just like came upon each other naked <laughs> and like, oh, hi. <laughs> and then, you know, later at breakfast, I addressed the situation and, and uh, you know, we all laughed about it, but I didn't even, at the time I didn't even know his name yet. Like it, it, yeah, it was awkward to say the least. <laughs> Both of us naked though. <laughs> oh my God. Oh God. All right, thanks Nick. Thanks Nick. Oh, the next one's for me. It's from Q. I'll read this. All right. <laughs> Question for me. If Chris had gotten arrested with no explanation, what would you assume he did? Stealing. <laughs> stealing. Stealing. I'm not a thief. <laughs> he's known to steal. <laughs> but not like what you would think. Like he's not the type of guy that would go to a store and steal. He's like Robin Hood. Like you'll steal from the rich. <laughs> And he'll give to the poor. Uh, yeah, maybe then. Yeah. Uh, but stealing for sure. Have you ever gotten arrested for stealing? No. I haven't either, but <laughs> <laughs> I did get caught stealing twice when I was younger. One time it, <laughs> one time it was at the grocery store for chewing or for stealing some chew, some like a big pouch of chewing tobacco. Oh, Me and my friends were experimenting with the the big chew that the baseball players would do. Yeah. And um, yeah, the the uh, the guy, the the bag boy, actually caught me, and he, he told me to take that big bag of chew out of my pocket, and so I did. And the manager just let me go free because <laughs> I hadn't left the store. Another time I got stealing was in Oakland. I put on some flip flops, and uh, I don't know why I didn't have regular shoes on in the first place, <laughs> but I put on some flip flops and walked out of the store with them, and I was caught. And that they, they, I was going back to my truck, and the security came, and they're like, um. You know, they, they told me that I stole and I was like, oh, this was an accident. I forgot that I had them on, you know, of course, which I hadn't. So then they take me to the back of the store. It was like a, you know, a Rite Aid or one of those kind of stores. I can't remember what it was. It was Thrifty's, Thrifty's Drugs, which is no longer around. Probably got stolen from too much. <laughs> and they took me to the back and there's this big security area where they had, they, I guess so many people stole from the store. Like they had a team of people watching the whole store Behind these those mirrors. Do you have like a like, photo in the store? Is it? They, no, they're they're watching. They're oh, okay. all watching. Like so, they're like, and I saw that their their team like finding other people stealing. Their, that girl's got something like, and so they made me sign something that would that either they would call the police or I had to sign something, you know. And so I signed the thing, and that you know I had to pay some fine to them. Oh. And I was like, I was like, no, I'm not going to pay the fine. And um, and uh, then they got a collection agency after me, and I was like. I told them, I'm never going to pay that, so you might as well stop trying now. And then, luckily enough, the place went out of business anyway. I remember one of the first times we ever started, when we first started dating, uh-huh. and then you took me to the old dick house oh, yeah. office. This is where I knew Chris was a bit of a thief. <laughs> <laughs> like He would go into the, the back area, and he's like, okay, grab this, take this. And he's like, oh, yep, I'm going to grab He took all this memorabilia, and he took a bike. Like, he made off with a BMX bike. It was an S&M Cruiser. Yeah. 24-inch wheels. <laughs> Such a desirable bicycle. So nice. <laughs> we still have it. You know who that bike actually belonged to? <laughs> yeah. It's Jeff Tremaine. And I, I didn't, I was going to, I was going to do it as like a joke, but then I forgot to tell him that I'd stolen it from him. So he brought that bike up like a little while back when we were at a barbecue at his house making pizzas. He's like, I had that 24 inch uh, S&M Cruiser. He had like all these BMX bikes. I was like, you know what, Jeff? I'm so sorry. I forgot to tell you. I stole that from you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, am- it's an amazing because, bike. Okay, it's so fast. So one time, I, I remember like there was all these interns that were working over at Dick House. Yeah. And this one intern was like, let me accompany you into the back storeroom because someone's been, th- like, someone's stealing. been stealing. <laughs> <laughs> and it was you. You know, it wasn't, though. It was an- There was another thief. <laughs> Actually, yes. And he was putting it on eBay. Yeah, and they caught him. The police raided his, he, he was stealing jackass memorabilia. Yeah, like all this, all in the storage area where all the shows that Dick House has made, uh, their props were were stored. All these things that we've had in Jackass and Wild Boys. Yeah, he was stealing them to sell them on eBay, but he was caught. And <laughs> you went. And I wasn't. <laughs> Until now. Well, I confessed my crime publicly. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, good. Um, okay. It's not like I stole from someone who didn't deserve it, though. Exactly. See, he's a Robin Hood. He's the modern day Robin Hood. Jeff, I don't know what you did to deserve this, but I'm sorry. I'll give the bike back, though, too, someday. <laughs> One time I actually broke into Jeff's house, actually, just to prove that his security system um, wasn't up to snuff. And I stole an acoustic bass from him, which I gave back. But, um, ju- but I, I, I got into the balcony. It was, it was at a previous house. Um, but yeah, he, I, I told him actually that right afterwards. I sent him pictures of myself stealing them. I had them photographed to document it. And um, he's like, why did my alarm go off? I was like, see, your security system needs maintenance. <laughs> <laughs> See what happens when you just ask a simple question? <laughs> all these stories. Yeah. Um, all right. I've got another one from Olivia. Awesome. If you could go back and redo a jackass stunt, what would it be? Okay. There's one stunt that, that I wish I would have taken the helm of, but I didn't. And that's the anaconda ball pit. The anaconda ball pit was um, where we had this big ball pit and this giant anaconda and um, Knoxville is dressed like a sailor and he's in it handling it. And the, the snake, you know, like is is like under the ball. So he goes to like reach his hand on the balls and it it just annihilated him. And when we were getting ready to film it, like we this was on Jackass 2. So it was straight off Wild Boys. And and um, Tremaine was like, Chris, are you going to do this one? And I'm like, and we were kind of like, I don't know. Will I just not be afraid of snakes? Because I've done so much stuff with snakes. But only one person could be in the bit because we couldn't share needles, which in this case, the needles were the, the anaconda's anaconda. jaws. We decided it would be better to have Knoxville do it. And then the bit came out so amazing. And I, I, was, I just played the lifeguard in it. And um, I was so jealous of being in that bit because it was, it, the, God, the snake was so thick. I think he was heavily fed. And, um, but, uh, <laughs> I mean, he was fatter than he was long. I mean, not, no, his, his width to length ratio was way off, but he was so scary looking. And I was just that that I wish I would have gotten to be like the main guy in that bit because it's so good. Exactly. But Knoxville nailed it. How big was it? It was big it's boy. so fat. It's it was so huge. Yeah. You know what it ate? It ain't a grown man. No, yeah. no, I don't know what he ate. Probably <laughs> a goat. It was like it, it must have been fed like Have you seen those anacondas eating like crocodiles? I have. Yeah. I've actually you know, we went somewhere it wasn't the longest anaconda I've mm. ever seen, but it was the fattest. Wow. You know, but yeah, what it lacked in length, it made up for in girth. And <laughs> <laughs> the biggest snake I've ever seen, though, was a reticulated python. There's always debate, like, what's the longest snake mm-hmm. in the world, the anaconda or the reticulated python? The reticulated python is actually the longest. And it was in Indonesia. Uh-huh. In a, it was huge. And I actually, like, I, I went to, like, hold it by its neck. You know, when you, when you handle a snake, you, gotta, you hold it, like, right behind its head. Yeah. You don't have to squeeze hard. And it started handcuffing me. And that was the only snake I've ever met that when it started handcuffing me with its body constricting, I don't think I could have gotten out of. I slipped out of it. But if I hadn't, like, it, it would have, like... Swallowed you all. Yep. Yeah, it, was, it was huge. <laughs> it was probably the biggest snake in the world, that snake in particular. I like their jaws because their jaws can go back, right? Is it? Yeah, they can uh, retract. Yeah, so they can good. somehow, like, devour, like, huge men. <laughs> so this is from B. Annoying question, but how was working with Sophia Coppola on Somewhere? Have you met her before while working with her ex-husband Spike Jones? It was awesome filming with Sophia Coppola when she went to like cast this movie. She thought I'd be great for it because she liked how I was with with kids, and um, I was so stoked that like someone outside of the Jackass world gave me opportunity to like play a big role in a movie. So. It was awesome, and um, I got to ad lib a lot of my lines, and I think I did a pretty good job. You pretty much wore whatever you wore. Yeah, yeah. I even did uh, like made one of the shirts that one of the other characters wore. He had a sub pop shirt on, you know. I did it with an iron on screen. Oh, nice! It was awesome making that movie, and I'm super stoked that Sophia chose me to be in it. And if she ever makes another movie or on her next movie, I hope she chooses me again. Snake Handler. Yeah. As well. Maybe it'll be called a snake handler. Yeah. Ooh, juicy. It was rad. And I want to be in more movies. Um, this is from Katie. So, hi, May and Chris. I was wondering what country Jackass Forever would have been shot in if COVID hadn't happened. I don't know if, if we were going to go to another country to film Jackass 
forever. But it's crazy, like how COVID really did kind of dictate a lot about the movie. And, it, you know, it, uh, we had to adjust the way we did pranks and, and um, had a big effect on how we filmed the movie. And so it would be awesome to get to do film another Jackass movie with no COVID. So yeah. I think that's a reason enough to like yeah. to make another Jackass movie. So I didn't exactly answer your question, but I put it out there to make another Jackass movie. Thanks, Katie. <laughs> yeah. All right. God, it'd be so easy to make a Jackass movie without a pandemic going on. So this question's from Adam and Madge. Manny Puig, the man is a legend. What was it like working with him? Still keep in touch? Funny Manny stories? Man, Manny is one of my heroes. We originally saw him on TV, you know, like when he was doing his nature show, this rad, like guy with long hair and a beard, super buff and this little tiny like bikini. And um, I was just like, that guy's awesome. We got to meet him. And he was really hard to find, but someone knew that he like frequented a certain strip club or something like that. And he knows so much about dealing with dangerous animals. And he was just up for it. Him and, and Mark Rackley and Chris Rackley, like got us like swim with sharks, like for the first time, like all these things that he somehow learned in his life, like, you know, swimming down to the swamp when in underwater and seeing an alligator and how to put your hand under it and bring it up to the surface. Just crazy stuff. Like that I never thought I would do. You know, I found myself doing when I was with Manny and being with Manny, like gives you this like false sense of security. Like you're, Oh, we're with this, like we're surrounded by, you know, 14 sharks in the middle of the ocean. And, but because Manny's with me, I feel like, Oh, it's, it's totally safe. Isn't he missing like fingers? Uh, after a lifetime of doing like <laughs> stuff with animals, he did get bit by a rattlesnake um, when he was filming something Jeez. else. I think they had him kept doing a take and, one too many times and it, it got his finger. So it actually, it bit him on the middle finger and they had to amputate it. So he can't flip anybody off with that hand, but it's kind of cool. <laughs> I've got one more from, from Adam Engmedge. You talk about your mom a lot, but how was you and your dad's relationship and any siblings? Me and my dad have a great relationship and uh, yeah, he's super cool. <laughs> we, we get along great. Um, Chris is, is identical to his dad, by the way. His demeanors, I know where he gets his demeanors from his dad. From like, Some of the, the lines that I say, like when yeah. we're filming, I, I totally got from him, like these weird, like 1950s sounding like phrases. My bifold. <laughs> his billfold. Billfold. His wallet's his billfold. Billfold, see? Yeah. And a lot of weird phrases that I say I got from him. My brother I grew up skating with, and he was an awesome skater. My sister is a doctor. She is. And, um, and she's also a great athlete. Yes. She's really buff. Very fit. She's a very fit woman. And and you've got a good relationship with both of them, right? Oh, yeah. Great relationship. <laughs> <laughs> no. We, I mean, we have a lot of great nieces from, from, from Matt and they made Allison. Us, yeah. yeah, they made us some great nieces. Yeah. We became auntie and uncle to some really lovely women. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Boys, better keep away from them. You break their hearts. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Well, actually, I think, like, um, Avery, she could kick anyone's butt. Like, she's hard. She's a black belt. She's a black belt. And she's like a Muay Thai fighter now. Yeah, she's just Muay Thai. Yeah, she's... I told her if she wants to get into the UFC that Uncle Chris knows a few people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could get her in if she wanted to. She's a bit young. Yeah. She, <laughs> she's, been, she's not she, old enough. She's not old enough. No. So the next one would be from David. Was wondering if Chris would sell anything from his WWE appearance, like the track jacket, suit, or something else if he kept them. If I did sell it, it would be like for a charity thing. I actually did save like a few things that we filmed Jackass Forever on from some bits that I'm, I'm going to eventually auction off for charity because I knew they would have just disappeared. Like Steve-O's eyebrows? Steve-O's eyebrows that got ripped off by the, by the hawk. Um, yeah, I saved those. <laughs> I opened, I opened like his little treasure drawer, and I see these like weird things, like look like hairy caterpillars with string attached yeah. to it. And he's like, "Oh, that's Steve O's eyebrows. Don't throw them away. <laughs> Don't throw those away." Yeah, I saved the he's eyebrows like, with it in mind to auction off for charity. Oh, we could help someone uh, with these eyebrows. It's a weird drawer, Chris. <laughs> it is a weird drawer. <laughs> yeah, there's other weird stuff in there too. Yeah. Ah. Oh, I forgot to have show and tell. I This is perfect. <laughs> I brought in. Let me just move away from him. Today we're going to show a little axe. This is one of my favorites. It's made in Sweden by Grandsfors Brooks. It's a hand hatchet. I think it's called a Coben. I mean, it's really handy. It's good for carving. 
and uh, which is really fun. But also for self protection, it conceals easily. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's a very like, despite its size, it's it's a hefty like. It's got some girth to it. I've used this one a couple yeah. of times. It's, this is actually May's favorite axe that yes. we have. Yes. I do have one that he got me. He's very romantic. Chris is very romantic for my birthday. He'd get me an axe, a little, you know, or a knife. And that's the, the type of relationship we have. <laughs> it feels so good in the hand, though. This is, this is a oh, fantastic. Lovely. It's weighted really well. I like actually making, like, kindling out of this. Yeah, it's so it's, it's really, really good handy for kindling. It's a really good splitting axe. Because it's a little handle but a big head. <laughs> nothing wrong with that <laughs> i know I don't you love it? it you love Just it don't you throw this. it's so awesome it is it's my mom got it for me when she was in sweden but you know she went into every silk. oh yeah she, you you tell mrs p if you like something and she'll just roll with it oh yeah there you go so <laughs> do you have another one i i brought in another knife that i really like this is um a giant mouse knife it's really pointy it's a really cool shape and i love it uh, this is a beautiful knife. It is, isn't it? Yeah. You want to feel it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's beautiful. What a nice knife. It's a bar lock. Here, I'll do that. Okay. So you, you have to, like, you pull this down and it goes like that. But, I mean, there's different ways of opening it. You can use this part or <laughs> you can just, like, go like that and swing it open. So it's awesome, though. He swings it towards me a lot. But I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you always seem to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe do it like down there. <laughs> anyway, so there's show and is tell. That, is that okay, Ira? If there was a question, I'm going to make up a question. Okay, go. Chris, what's one thing that you really want? I want some wheelie shoes because <laughs> I think they're so cool and I want to try them out. And whenever I see a kid like roll past me, I'm like, <laughs> what a guy. And I want to be that guy. <laughs> I guess they make them in adult sizes, so I'm going to get some. I'm going to pay full price. <laughs> where do you buy them? Where do you buy wheelies? Amazon, maybe. That's where I'm going to search for them. You're not going to go into a skate shop. I would love for them to send me a free You're not going to go into a skate shop and go, do you guys have wheelies? They have a team? I don't know. Do they have a pro team? When, when we did Big Brother magazine, um, we got shoes sent from, they call it, it was called soap shoes. Oh, yeah, I And they had the little, for those that weren't around at the time, soap shoes made their appearance. They had a little, like thing that you could do like handrails on a little slippery thing like a notch in the middle and they wanted that to catch on it's like you're running and then you jump on a handrail and yeah i did one naked actually um on, on like a I, I grinded it at the it's a is a subscription ad for big brother yeah no it wasn't scary i i just attacked it with total uh, aggression and abandon <laughs> I want to see that photo. Actually, yeah. we should go through some of the old Big Brother magazines. Yeah, I tried to do this big handrail in front of LFP that was kind of windy, and I, I didn't even come close to making it. But I, And I had clothes on, too. God, in that Big Brother office, there was some weird stuff. I just remember, like, dildos everywhere. And, like, because <laughs> the nearby magazines that were reviewing stuff like that. I think it's just a little bit open out here. In L- like, I, I got a bit of a culture shock moving out here to um, Los Angeles because... It was just like, well, Chris's closet, dildos, dildos, dildos. But, you know, like you go around the corner and there's like a sex shop and, and it's it's easy, you know, it's pretty chill. Yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty open. I mean, look at our, even our stress reliever. Uh, it looks like a dildo, kind of. It does. Kind of. <laughs> but it's for stress. Yeah. Um, so this is from Sergio. He digs the logo design and he wants to definitely support us. So Chris wanted Chris just wanted to say you and Steve got me through rough deployments when I was in active duty in the 2000s. Definitely needed the laughs. I wonder why they called them snapping a snapping turtle. Awesome. Thank you so much Sergio and and um all of us at Jackass appreciate and and May and I appreciate what you guys do and and things that we can't even imagine that you've seen and it it's an honor to be able to make you laugh. So thank you. And why they do call it a snapping turtle, I think I've got a little scar on my nose that answers that question. But you, God, that snapping turtle was a star. Right after I asked it, he snapped me, if you haven't seen it. So yeah, awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Sergio. All right, so this this guy, Karim, is from Bosnia. Have you ever wondered how much of a deep mark you've made on people's lives all around the world through your philosophy and overall groove? Thank you so much. And, and that's awesome. I, I love like, if there's one thing I want to like us to inspire people, it's like you can do anything in this world that you want to like the people like love security or the idea of security. And, you know, that's not for everyone. And 
it's really scary to like to like live your own dream. So if we inspired anyone to like do what they wanted to do in this world, you know, that's why we're here. Keep doing it and find other people that feel the same way. You know, when you're around like-minded people, like, you know, it'll be amazing where it takes you. Yeah, that's lovely, Chris. It's true. It's really true. Um, thank you, Karim from Bosnia. So the next one is Chris. Shaved balls or unshaved? It's a very good question. <laughs> and I've been actually blessed with not really having... I heard about other like other guys, you know, talking about like like their ball hairs or shaving their ball hairs. And I was like, what? You have ball hairs? I don't really have ball hairs that much in in um but i'll tell you who does is poopies in um when the first time we saw him naked (laughs) was i think at the very beginning of jackass forever we did the penis flattener that medieval device um that we learned about from some german characters um he you know everyone was naked and he he trimmed like the top of his muff but he hadn't trimmed his balls and in a (laughs) no i thought it was the other way around i thought he trimmed his balls because oh, the all, top we, was hairy? all we saw was was like like this huge muff that came out like of his pants. I, have I remember seen... Tremaine was like, "Whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> whoa!" Maybe it was Dave England then, that shaved the he, top and, and then, not the bottom. No, because Dave's balls. Mm-hmm. He only has one ball. Dave's ball <laughs> or doesn't have hair, and I know this because after the um, <laughs> that rope drop with a brick, yeah, he showed everybody his balls. At breakfast (laughs) the next day, and it was purple. It was really terrible. It it looked like it had been in a fight. And it didn't have any hair on it? It looked camouflaged. Or could you not see the hair because it was blonde? No, no, no. He he was, it was out there. Dave England's a real blonde. He is. He's a natural blonde. It kind of creeps me out thinking about it. And and I don't think Steve-O has any hair on his balls because, um, after that thing in Denver where he stapled. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when we first started filming Jackass, like a lot of the guys hadn't caught on. Maybe they should trim a little bit. Like when, a 70s muff. <laughs> we, we filmed something in Knoxville was was naked and we were like, hey, nice muff. Ah. And he's like, what? Are you, am I supposed to trim it? We're like, yes. Yeah, it was out of control. Knoxville's muff was out of control. Steve-O's muff will get out of control. I think he sometimes likes to wear that style, though. Aaron doesn't have any hair on his balls, either. Aaron shaves his bare. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, if he if he didn't shave, I think, I, I hate to say it, and not that I'm looking closely or anything, but some of the guys might have some gray hairs in there. In no. Their, maybe. <laughs> we all shaved our muffs to make the beard for Aaron to unknowingly wear for the terror taxi bit. Yeah, there were some gray hairs in the beard, and they weren't mine. That was so insane. <laughs> you guys are some cheeky fellas. I brought my own clippers because I didn't want to share clippers. Everybody else shared the same pair of clippers, which I think is, is disgusting. That's where I draw the line. Uh, clippers and microphones. Yeah. If you want to know where I draw the line, that's where I draw it. Thanks, Chris, for that question. I'm not sure if thanks. it answered it, but thanks, you got Chris. something. Okay. So this is Andrew, and this is more advice. So I'd love to change careers to do something outside be in nature, but I don't know where to start. Do you have any advice on how to keep the fun um, and adventure alive? Thank you for decades of laughs. Yeah, I think just, you know, think about what you want to do in nature. Do you want to be like a ranger or a guide or or film in nature? Whatever, I mean, whatever it is, you know, meet other people that do what you want to do. I think that's a good place to start. Do what they do and yeah. just go out yeah. and do it. Do it until you don't have to do your other job anymore. What kind of nature, Andrew? I need specifications. Yeah. Because I'm thinking, do you know what I'm thinking? Uh Is being like going to Hawaii and moving to Hawaii and being like a a lifeguard. I was thinking about being like the next crocodile hunter or something. Oh, okay. But there's so many things you can do in nature. Well, yeah, I was thinking like, you know, a cabana boy or something like that or a girl. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, just, you know. Yeah, find people that do what you want to do and, and um I'd go somewhere warm. What would you do? If I want to do something okay, in nature. Okay, say for example, like you're not doing what you're doing and you want to do what Andrew is doing and change careers and be in nature, what would you do? So if I was to start all over, yep. there was no jackass ever happened yep. and I wanted to work in nature, I would probably be like a wilderness guide. I would like so I would, you know, get to know an area really well mm-hmm. like you do and and then start taking people on adventures. Not a lifeguard. I think we answered, yeah. That's not really a nature. That's that's more of a, a beach job. Beach nature. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. nature, right? If you want to be a lifeguard, I've, I, if, if you want to be a lifeguard, you know, you, you take 
lifeguarding lessons. I think I'm, I'm a bit of an island girl. That's why I, yeah. like, I like the warmth of the sun, sand between my toes. Andrew, just you know, do follow your heart. Whatever it is you want to do, just do it, and and the money will come secondary. Money is a byproduct of of you know doing whatever it is you love. Because that, that's like exactly how you followed your path with Jackass, yeah. like paid. Yeah, we did a Big Brother magazine for a long yeah. time. And before that, making just dumb videos with friends, you know, 15 years down the line, you know, like TV happened. But just keep doing what you're doing. Don't just be like, how much am I going to get paid for doing it? Like some people think like that in life and you're in the wrong business if, if mm-hmm. you know, you think that way. Maybe aside from stockbrokers. Yeah. But maybe they love stocks. I don't know. Okay, this is from Tanner. <clears throat> UFC 300, Justin Gaethje versus Max Holloway for the BMF belt. Who you got? And what do you want the main event to be at the UFC 300? I actually pondered that question today after I dropped Axe off at school. And um, I, I think Gaethje is the most likely. I mean, he's, he's way bigger and stronger. And it would be amazing to see Max just pull it together and, and uh, you know, throw him off. <laughs> oh, that's a that's a tough one though. Indeed, but it's going to be an exciting fight. God, Max Holloway. Because I love Holloway. I love him too. And he, God, he's taking some hits. I tell you what, I want to see as the main event for three hundred a three way. Yeah, three hundred three way. Just like a three. tournament style. Yeah. yeah, I would like that too. All three of them at the same time. <laughs> like three men enter, one man leave. Yes. Like that. Three hundred. Like, they got to do stuff like that. Done. We, yeah, like um, yeah. Dana. Fantastic. Three brutes with different styles. Yeah. Especially guys that don't like each other, like McGregor, Habib, well, he, yep. and like Masvidal or somebody. But Robert you is. basically want a three-way. Like, I mean, we want a three-way. For UFC 300, we'd like to see a three-way. And then a battle royal st- yeah. style fight. Women's strawweight division, battle royal. Because when I was a kid, I went to wrestling, and there was an all-woman battle royal. No the way. same night I saw Superfly Snook of wrestle, Jerry the King Lawler, and it was amazing. And uh, yeah, that, that battle royal was was the highlight of the night. Oh, Tanner, was that was a really good question. But, yeah. All right. Oh, my God. You read this one. Okay. Kyle said, I was a skateboarder and I got a pair of Duke's riser pads and saw a picture of you and you talked about a game called Hide the Duke. Where was the first time you played this game and did you ever get caught playing it? We hid our Duke under a Christmas tree in a tissue box. Thank you so much. I'm stoked that you got the Duke's riser pads Shorty's, um, which was owned by my friend Tony Biolis, he asked me to um, be a part of the Duke's riser pads because I wrote an article in Big Brother called Hide a Duke. And what you do is you get a Duke, a poop, and you hide it somewhere in someone's house. And I'll tell you where, where you hid answer my Duke? question, where I hid the Duke. A friend of mine and me were at some girl's house that he knew. And I don't know why we were there, but I didn't like, the, I just met her for the first time. And I didn't like her attitude at all. She, she ticked me off. And so- when she wasn't looking, I had a poop. I don't know where I got the poop. It wasn't mine. It might have been from an animal even, but I hid it in her microwave as we were leaving. I went into the kitchen. I put it in the microwave, and I actually turned the microwave on for oh, a couple of minutes. naughty, Chris. And, and then we left. And I never, I, yeah. Do you think they were dated after, like after no, that incident? No, but some other guy I knew dated her, and I had a run-in with her. When, and I didn't put it together because it was a few years later that that was the girl who's, who's duped that I cooked. Do you know you? She, uh, I'm sure, yeah, she knew it, we would have known it was me, but didn't have the goal to say anything. But yeah, I didn't put it together until like days later that that was a girl who's Duke, who got a Duke cooked at her microwave. <laughs> but it's crazy. Yeah, I didn't like her attitude at all, though. So? Uh, yeah, to punish her for her attitude and for the attitude of her, of her friends. And uh, yeah, and also they were bullies. Oh, all right. They judged people by the colors of their skin. <gasps> yeah. They were those kind of people. So they had to have a Duke hidden in their house. Where else would you hide one? Oh, uh, I work with what I have. In that case, I had a kitchen and a microwave. Tony actually wanted to do a, a follow-up thing where um, you unscrew a shower head and you put the Duke inside oh. the shower. So when they, they take a shower, the poop goes all over them, that's which <laughs> that's pretty hardcore. That, that person, you better really not like. <laughs> so many places you could hide a Duke. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Don't. P.O. Mr. Pontius <laughs> over here. He might just hide a duke in your microwave. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kyle. There's your answer. Um, so Omar, he asks, how's your relationship with Brandon Novak? And what do you think of him? Um, 
I talk to Brandon Novak or I text with him every once in a while and he's awesome and I'm so great to hear these how good he's been doing in um, when I first met Novak one time we like we stayed up really late talking and I was you know he was always on things you know just being like effed up and in a, and I thought there was so much more to him than just being the guy that like has to like crash into something or like jump into the freezing cold water or get something bad done to him and um, which was his kind of role and yeah. back in the amateur skateboard days when he was like a little uh, sponsored am for Powell I remember seeing him at the amateur finals in Houston Texas. Mm. And uh, he was a really good skater, still is. But yeah, it, it's awesome to see Novak doing really good. Yeah, too. doing good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As like he I, would. I was, I was kind of terrified of him because he was, you know, um, with Bam, and it was the uh, fuckface unstoppable. Oh tour. yeah, it was really jarring to see a person like that because he wasn't like so straight. Yeah, he was kind of like um, just. Like, and 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 then I see him the next time I see him, he's on stage naked dancing around. And, you know, it's so great to see the transformation that he is now a person with so much confidence and helping others to recover from um, addictions and become supreme human beings. You know, I, I really applaud Novak from what I knew him as to how I know yeah. him now. Yeah, it's he's so much more than like someone's punching bag or sidekick or, yes. you know. You know, and you know, he's, he's an awesome person. He's doing so great with his uh, um, rehab facilities. Yeah, and, and he's doing great. And so, he generally does care about people. Yeah, he does. He has he has a heart of gold. He does. Yeah. And he always did. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, Omar, that was awesome. Um, okay, so, so Connor asks, this guy, Connor. Connor McGregor? No. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what he'd ask me. I wonder what you, if you encountered Connor McGregor, I wonder how you two would be. Connor does not like Steve-O. He doesn't like Steve-O because Steve-O was asked at a UFC match who he would bet on in the fight between him and Poirier. And because Steve-O said he, uh, would, if he was to bet, he would put bet on Poirier, Connor took huge offense to it. And he's like, he like get, the, get this crackhead off my company's website or something like that, which wasn't even his company, but just took huge offense to it. Like, steve was my friend, so I'd, I'd rush to his back. But I, yeah, I've never met McGregor. I, I don't know how he'd take to me. I mean, he'd probably, if he knew me, he'd, he'd probably love me. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I could say the same for him, but maybe. <laughs> I, heard, I heard he's actually a nice guy. Yeah, I heard he is. Too. You know, when people get famous really quick, they get, it's easy to get caught up in the excitement. Well, he's, he's a showman. He's selling he's things, showman. you know. He's selling, he's yeah. selling his whiskey, selling his fights. Yeah. So he's a showman. He's, I mean, he's, got a, yeah. he's working for... Yeah, I, th- I think he's a good guy in, in his heart. Yeah, I've, done, I've done many things that... When I was first on TV, that like probably Priel could have taken as me being a jerk. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not going to read Connor's question because it's not really a question. <laughs> That's what you get, Connor. Thank you for your contribution. <laughs> and whether or not it's from the Connor McGregor or not, you'll never know. Uh, okay, so this is from John. Hey, Chris, how do you find the G spot? What is the G spot? I'm just curious and nerdy. Well, John, if you haven't found it now, then I don't know. Probably never find it. I don't. I don't know. I don't even know. The, the yeah. male G spot is up the bum. Yeah, up the bum. You know, I'm getting to the age where it's going to be time for me to visit the proctologist soon and get my prostate examined. <laughs> so I will tell you all about the male G spot when the doctor hits it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thanks, There's John. <laughs> um, the next one's from Brianna. Um, Brianna, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> When I was younger, I used to watch Jackass at my grandma's house and when we would stay the night. After she would go to bed, my cousins and I would turn on Jackass and watch it for hours since we knew our parents wouldn't want us watching it. It was the best forbidden fruit. Was there ever a show or something your parents didn't approve of, but you indulged anyway? You know what? When I was a kid, we didn't have many channels. We lived out in the country and we had three channels. We had five. There was no, uh, there was no shows that my mom didn't like us doing. But those MTV Beach House shows, you know, where they do bikini contests. Jen O'Brien, who later was a pro skater, she was on it, and in, in she, I think she got like third or something. And so we all had to watch it with her and, and her boyfriend at the time. And she's like, "That girl can't even dance." Blah blah blah. And, and um, like she was describing, like, you know, like her impression of of it, you know. And uh, I guess she never got her prizes. She, uh, people didn't know it, but yeah, like that's the kind of stuff she was into at the time. She later, 
she later became a you know pro skater and that's rad though yeah from bikini to pro skateboarder yeah. okay i've got one final one from um tony hey i've got a question is this the dumbest question you've ever had much love from sweden it's not the dumbest question. The Oscars, vaya. Thank you, guys. Love, that was awesome. Yeah. I and, love uh, that one from Sweden. Thanks so much. It's so fun answering your questions. And um, keep sending them. And even if you don't get an answer to your question, you're going to get some kind of answer, some kind of story that's going to inspire. Because, I mean, going into this, I didn't know that these stories were going to be told. We've Thank you. we dug up some dirt. Yeah. Ask anything. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Good job.